Now let's have a look at the layout. So for the layout, we're going to create another folder outside here, and this is going to be called views. And inside views, we're going to have another folder called layout. Like so. And inside this layout folder, we're going to have our main layout here where we say main. So I'm going to create a new file called main.ejs because we're using EJS in this case. And this is going to be our main layout. Now we also want to have pages. And for the pages, I'm just going to be stacking them under views. And let's create our index page index.ejs. And this index page is going to act as our home page. Let's put h1 and we'll put home. Currently, if we save this and if we go back to the server and the route, we are only sending a message when we visit the home page. Now we need to change this and I want to do rest.render. And the reason I want to do render is because I want to render a specific page. And in this case, it's going to be the home page. So let's do that. We can remove this and we can do res.render. And inside here, we say which page do we want to render. In this case, it's going to be the index. We don't have to put anything like .ejs or anything like that. And then inside here, we can pass some data, but I'll show you this in a second. So that's how this is going to work. We're rendering the home page here. But if we visit the website now, you will see that everything is empty. And this is because we're now using our main layout from here. So here it is, our main layout, which is under views, layout, here it is. Now, if you start typing HTML, and if you select HTML5, the emit abbreviation tool is going to create a very basic HTML5 document. And inside here, you will see the usual, we have our head, our body, and so on. Let's put something like main layout. Save this. And now if you go back to the page, you will see that we're getting main layout. I am zoomed in quite a lot, so you can see. But if I do right click, and then if I do view page source, you see that we're getting the page layout. Now you might be wondering why isn't the index page rendering? And this is because we need to do some EJS in order for that to happen. So this is going to be reusable throughout most of our pages. But inside here is where we want to add the content of our actual pages. So for example, let me show you, we can do EJS and then inside here I can do out. So this is going to be, this is how you start EJS equals, we can put body. And one thing that I wanted to show you super quickly is if you go to extensions, I'm using an extension called EJS language support, which is amazing. It makes everything so much easier. All you have to do is start typing EJS. And it gives you all the options such as each statement, else, if, else, um, escaped, for loop, and so on. So if we put the body and save this, now we should expect to get the content from our actual page, which is going to be just home. Let's save this, let's save this, and let's go back and let's refresh our website. As you can see, we're getting h1 home, which is a little bit weird. Let me have a look at what's happening. Instead of equals, put dash body. And now if you go back, you will see that we're getting an H1, which just says home. If we look at the source one more time, I'm going to refresh this. You will see that we're getting the main template here. And inside the main template, we are getting the home page. So we want this to be reusable through the entire website. We don't want to repeat ourselves. And if we add a script, potentially we might want that script to be available on the entire website. And just like that, we can create more routes. For example, if we go to the main.js here, I can create one more route just as an example. I can create slash about. And obviously, this is going to render the index, the home page here. So we can change it to about. And now instead of index, I can create another one. Let me copy this and I can do about.ejs. And now I can do h1 about. Save this. And now you will see that if I save everything, let's go back to the browser. Home is working. It's using the same layout. And if I go to slash about, you will see that about is working. And if I inspect the code, view page source, you will see that it's using exactly the same template, which is exactly what we want. If we go back, all right, let's close everything except the layout main.ejs and the route inside here. Now the routes can be actually split up into controllers, but
But since we're doing a basic project today, we don't need to overcomplicate it. And one thing that I wanted to show you super quickly before we uh, continue is how to render EJS data, how to pass EJS data. For example, we are rendering the home page here. And if you want to pass some data, let's create a very basic like title and description. So I'm going to call this locals, const locals. And we're going to create a very basic object which contains a title. And the title is going to be called Node.js block. And then I'm going to do comma and then we're going to do description. And for the description, I'm going to copy and paste simple block created with Node.js, Express and MongoDB like so and save. Now, if you want to pass this to the page and render that data, what we can do is grab the const from here, locals, and we can do comma and we can pass it in here. Now, if you pass more objects, you can put them in curly brackets like so, and you should be good to go. Now, we can use this cons to actually render the data in all layout. Now, if you go back to layout, main EJS, for example, let's change the title to EJS, and this is going to be EJS out, output value, and then inside here, we can do locals, and then we can select the title like so. And if we save, you should be able to see now. If we go back to the home page, you'll be able to see that the title is now Node.js blog. If I was to right click view page source, you will see that the title changes, which is awesome. And we can do the same thing with the descriptions. Since it's available for us here, description, we can do exactly the same inside here. But the description is a little bit different. We need to do as a meta tag. So meta, and then this is going to be name equals description. And then we can do content equals, and then inside here we can do EJS out, and then this is going to be locals dot description like so. We also need to close this, and we should be good to go. If we go back, refresh, we're getting the description simple block created with Node.js, Express, and MongoDB, which is great. Let's go back and let's start by bringing or style sheets and JavaScript. For the styles, earlier in this tutorial, I created a public folder. Inside here, you can see that we have style sheets, images, and JS. So inside the CSS folder, I'm going to create a new file called style.css. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is just change the body background color to something else, just so we can try it. So I'm going to put this aqua color and save it. If we go back to the main layout, Inside here is where we can include the CSS. And in order to do that, we can link it. So link CSS and we have style.css as default. But this is where the public folder comes in hand. We can now do slash CSS slash style.css. And we don't need to specify anything else. We don't need to go backwards in folder. So for example, uh, backwards to layer, to view, sorry. And then to the main folder, we don't need to do that. We can just do slash CSS slash style.css. And we can do that for the images, JavaScript, and so on. Whatever we have in the public folder, which is great. Now, if I save this, and if I go back to the browser, hopefully we should be able to see that our background changes to aqua. And this is because of our style sheet. Now let's do the same with the JavaScript. So inside the JavaScript folder here, I'm going to create JavaScript file called script.js. And this is where we're going to do some interaction stuff later on. And now let's include it to a project and we can do script. And then this is going to be type of script and it's going to be text slash JavaScript. We can defer it. So, so this basically waits for the, for the document to be loaded. And then we can put the source equals, and then this is going to be again, inside the JavaScript folder and then script.js like so. And now we can use the script. In order to test this, potentially we could go here and we could do alert or console log, whatever. Hello. Oops. Hello. And now if we go back to the website, refresh, you will see that we're getting or script is working. We are getting a hello alert and I can just press OK. Cool. That's pretty cool. Let me remove this alert. We definitely don't want that. 
and close it. Now it's a good time to start constructing our layout. So our layout is going to consist of a couple of parts. We're going to have a search, we're going to have a search bar, we're going to have a header, and we're going to have a footer. I kind of want to wrap everything in a container so we can center align the whole layout. And in order to do this, I'm going to create a div with a class name of container. And I'm going to wrap everything, all the content inside this container like so. Inside this container, we can also include our header. So you could potentially type it inside here, but instead I'm going to separate the header and the footer into a separate file. So what we're going to do inside views, I'm going to add another folder called partials. Inside partials, I'm going to start by creating the header dot ejs and inside here is where we're going to be adding the header so i'm going to put header for now and i'm going to go back and remove this so we want to include this file and in order to do this with ejs we can do ejs and then we can do dash include and then we can just include the file by doing single course dot dot slash partials and then slash uh, in this case this is going to be header dot ejs like so and all header should be working so if i save this if i save the header if we go back we should be able to see that the header is working we need to do exactly the same thing for the footer so this is going to be easy we create a new file footer.ejs i'm just going to put random text footer and now we can copy this header and after the body we can put the footer like so if we go back, we have header, home, footer, and then the about should follow. So we have header, about, footer. Obviously, we're not going to leave it like that. Uh, let me go back. And now, and now I actually want to wrap the body into its own main tag so we can style later on. So I'm going to do main. And then for this main, I'm going to give it a class name of main just in case we change it to whatever. I'm going to copy the body and put it inside the main and we should be good to go. So let's close the main.ejs. Let's go to the header.ejs and let's open the style.css just in case. I'm going to remove the body here and I'm going to and I'm going to focus on the header. So this is actually going to be fairly simple. I'm going to create a HTML5 header element and this HTML5 header element is going to have a class of header. And again, this is just because I want to style this element, but in case we change this to a div, the styles will be still applied, which is great. And then inside here, we're going to have three sections. We're going to have our logo, which is going to be a link. So a href, and this is going to be a link to the homepage when you click the logo. And this is going to have a class name of header underscore underscore logo. And then we're going to have the logo as node.js to keep it simple. So that's that. Then we're going to have our main navigation of the website inside a nav. And this navigation is going to have a class of header underscore underscore nav. And then inside this navigation, we're going to have an unordered list with a couple of lists for links. So the links are basically going to be an a href. And then the homepage is going to be a slash. And then this is going to have potentially a class name that we're going to do like an active class and so on now we can duplicate this two more times and for example we can have about which we've already created so i can do about and then we can have contact now i'm not actually going to create the contact page but you already know how to do that just copy the about page pretty much and create a router frame and that will be fine the last thing that i want to do is the search bar and then we'll have a look at how this looks. And the last thing that I want to do inside here is a search button. So I'm going to create a div with the class name of header underscore underscore button. And then for this, I'm going to create a button. And this button is going to have a class name of search btn, which we're going to use later on to select with JavaScript area expanded to false. So as default, our search bar will be closed and that's why we, we want to have area expanded as false. But when we click on the button, we want to change it to true and I'll show you how to do that as well. And then inside here, I'm going to do search and I've already prepared a search SVG 
which you can copy and paste or you can put an icon i'm gonna paste it from here i have this svg from my figma design here i've just exported this as svg let's save this and let's have a look at how it looks so if you refresh i am zoomed in a lot but if you refresh you'll see that we're getting the logo the navigation the search bar we're getting the home content and the footer we might as well super quickly finish the footer because it's going to be super basic so what i'm going to do is jump into partials footer.ejs and inside here we can just do footer and then for the footer i'm going to give it a class name or footer and then inside here we can do ampersand copy which is the copy sign and then inside here we can do ejs out and the ejs out is going to be date like so and then we can put dot get full here and this function will hopefully return the full here and then i'm going to do ready and then i'm going to paste a dot character which i've copied from the internet and then built with node.js and mongodb i'm sure there is a proper html character for this but i don't know what it is so save this let's go back refresh and we're getting a problem the reason we're getting a problem is because probably that so let's have a look and yep the problem here is because i didn't put new and now it should back if i go back refresh and you will see that we're getting copyright sign 2023 rally built with node.js and mongodb which is great all right so the plan is to build all of the elements for the home page and then you can either follow along if you wish to see how i do the styling of the website or you can copy the styles and skip the section after i think that's a good plan so let's start by all right if we quickly look at the design on the home page we're gonna have something about the author of the website then we're gonna have an image and the latest post so i'm gonna close this and let's start building the home page super quickly so for the author i'm gonna create a div with the class name of author and then inside this div we're gonna have an h1 and then this h1 is gonna have a class name of author underscore underscore heading and then i'm just gonna say hi i'm ready and then on another line we're gonna have the author body which is gonna be a paragraph with the class name of author body and then this is gonna say web developer and content creator for the next section we're going to have the image so i'm going to put img for image and then the image is going to be located under images and then hero dash image dot web p the alt tag is going to be a person looking out through a window we're going to have a class of hero image and then I'm going to have the width of the image, which is 981. And then the height is going to be 528. Save this. And now we can focus on the next section, which is going to be the articles. I'm going to put this into a section like so. We can give this section a class name of articles. And inside here, we can do an H2. So H2. And then this is going to have a class name of articles. Underscore, underscore heading. And then the heading is a bit is going to be latest post all right and inside here we're gonna have all unordered list so for the unordered list i'm just going to call this one class of article ul and then inside here we're going to have a bunch of lists for each article so they're going to come from the database we're just going to do one as an example a href and then an empty link and then inside here we're gonna do the title which is gonna be wrapped in a span so post title like so and then i'm gonna duplicate this i'm gonna do a class name of article list date underscore underscore date like so and this is gonna be the date i'm just gonna put the date like so and the last thing that i'm gonna do here is the pagination which is going to be a link and then we're going to do the class of pagination ampersand lt which is an arrow and then view order post save this and that's pretty much our homepage. 
And that's hopefully going to cover most of the styles. If we go to the website super quickly, you will see all of the stuff that we have and we can start starting the website.